Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dean here today with Burn One, and I'm gonna be giving you guys a different type of content normal. I'm gonna be doing a collection video. Uh, why? Well, I, I own a lot of stuff. It seems like an easy cash and do it once, post in the collection flex uh, chat and Discord. But yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll probably just only do this once, but I wanna show you guys the cool stuff I've collected. Um, I'm, I like a lot of the stuff I've collected, of course. So we're gonna start off with Max Rarity Dog Days. I have almost four of everything and missing a few things, but uh, Yu Yu Tay and online, they just don't have these old sets anymore. So, yeah, it's just like, it's just the foils. Uh, I know they can't get the entire binder on here. I'll just stop at like the SPs. Don't want this video to be too long. Uh, the SPs are kind of hard to like see, I think, in this set. I don't, I don't really like them until you hit the third set. Uh, I do have these, but that's in a deck. I'll go over the deck later. And yeah, like this is the exact same art as the normal one. It's got the yellow signature on the, I see like right there. It's got the yellow signature on the yellow background. This one actually looks pretty good. I think this one's hard to see though. Squirrel World, there we go. Try to get that signature on there. And it's a playset binder, so it's like much larger than normal binder, that's why I can't seem to get everything. I believe this is one of the SPs. I don't own it. I don't own it. Uh, this thing has been sold out. I can't find it online. Um, I'm hoping, you know, now that Japan's back up, um, I'm hoping to be able to find this when I dig through some Japanese shops. Hopefully we can get the playset. And that's it for at least this binder, except for the fact that I shoved all my Hello Happy World SPs in the back. These are my extras, or my extra foils. I mean, Climax, of course, aren't SPs. Uh, the big ones are, of course, the Musashi. I wish I had a second one of these, but I was a little too cheap back at the time. Had to buy this SSP instead. Played this in New York. Definitely had to rep that Misaki was best girl. Also, the card's, like, okay enough. It's not... Great. Um, we've got the foil climaxes. I'll do that this way. Got the foil climaxes with the Hello Happy World stamp. Of course, foil wins for the mill combo. Now, a lot of the sleeves here are for cards that are actually in decks. The Amagi got pulled out of all of the decks, so. Yeah, it just kind of sits here in the binder now, yeah. now that you don't play the level 1 combo. Of course, I do have four of the Azusa SP as well. Kind of wish I would have picked up an SSP back in the day. I saw that they were like 300 at the time. I didn't have the money back then. Not when I'm having to buy quad Hagumis. This is the uh, bounce back from the, the TD set. Of course. Only, I think I only own two. I might own three of this, I forget. I never actually played this card, the one that runs the stock. It always just felt like too much of a uh, commitment to use. This one's pretty good. I've got three of the SPs for the Twin Drive. The Twin Drive SP is really hard to see there on that camera, but oh, if I hit the angle with the light, it's a little bit easier. I'll get back to that one in a minute. We have Four of the Kara Expo exclusives, of course. You know, if it was a Climax combo, I definitely had to own four of it. I, I thought this combo was unplayable. It was kind of cute, but it was uh, also just not very good. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is the Kara Expo. Wait, never mind. Never mind. This is the good one. This is the good one. This is the, um, this is the one from the pack. This is the bad card. The reason I always get confused is... Same art. It's been a long time since I've repped this card. It's been three plus years, three to four years. But yeah, no, this, this card, good. This card, bad. Same art. One's an English exclusive. Uh, these are just SRs. I put like most of the Hello Happy World stuff here. This is the Pyra Kokoro. She salvaged the Climax, I think, on play. So hard to see 
the signature there. There we go. You know, all the Bang Dream cards, a lot of them just have the exact same like stamp. It's, it's basically a stamp, but for the character. I wouldn't even call it a sign because it's not most of the time. Like this is a... Uh, It's just that, that right there. This is the Brainstorm. Uh, it's Misaki, so it's Best Girl, of course, on four. So for some reason, I don't own four of this thing, and you know, it's kind of hard to find old SPs now, so I don't know where I'm gonna get the fourth, or if I ever will. I, my interest in Bang Dream kind of died down, and Hell of Happy World doesn't really get support anymore. If, damn, it's so hard to get that signature on there. The camera does not want to pick it up. I do play this combo. This combo's pretty good. I have uh, four of it, three sleeves. Definitely. Camera is struggling to find those signatures. There we go. So you need to blast light at it. Uh, this is the mill combo. I don't remember what this is. Oh, this would probably be the Kokoro that goes with it. Uh, the last card. This is the mill combo with the Misaki that changes. This thing was okay. I sleeved it for a little bit. Uh, thankfully, the card was cheap. It was like 20 bucks or something when it came out. Don't really get that anymore. And then this was like one of my MVPs back in the days when I played the deck. The Misaki that changes. Definitely enjoyed having SPs of that flex. And since we looked at Hello Happy World, I guess I'll show the deck. I do have the deck maxed with three to four of the healer. I think it's four of the healer. It's so hard to get these signatures. Oh no. The Pogamy, still hard to get those. The Hogamy's like actually signed, so. This one's not, this is like more of the stamp. It just says like, it's like the Hogamy stamp that they have. Of course, the Climax Searcher. I only own two of this, I kind of wish I owned more. Uh, no list actually plays more, it's just, it's kind of annoying when I collect four of most things, but then like these Hello Happy World collection, I have like mismatched amounts. I have like three to four. I have like two to threes on some, or one, or less. Uh, the Kokoro. Uh, this card's very good, being able to stack any trigger you want with the yellow. Hopefully they give them a good shot one day. The uh, the shot trigger is very nice, I think, with this. Then it's like, it's like Marika, kind of. Of course this, I mean, we've already seen that. Uh, the Choice. We've already seen this. Azusa, we went over this thing. It's a 4K. Just uh, just a decent playmaker, good art. Kaoru. Uh, I don't actually own four of this thing either. I think I only own one or I own two, it seems. I managed to get my hands on two of these. I didn't think I needed it when it came out. Uh, and then when I started playing the deck, I realized this combo was not too bad. I mean, it's aged pretty poorly since then, but you know, two years ago when this came out, uh, this combo was actually pretty decent, and I didn't pick them up on release, so it just became very hard to get them because I don't like buying cards I don't use. Uh, the Hogami, this card is actually insane. It's a stock bomb that like coin flips back to hand. It's kind of like the old Monogatari Karu or Kanbaru. And then uh, probably one of my favorite cards that I own, like individual cards that I own, is the SSP Kokoro. People remember back in the day, I think it took me six or seven months of like posting wanting to buy to be able to find this thing. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite looking cards. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll probably play this in any like Bang Dream deck that plays yellow, like going forward forever. I just love the way it looks. I love the colors. Uh, they definitely killed it with the band leader SPs in that set. 
So that's the first binder. Well, you better believe I have a lot of binders. I have a lot of decks. Uh, more Dog Days, because Dog Days, if you didn't know, has a ton of sets. I know this looks base rarity, but here's the thing, is I have max rarity Dog Days. The actual deck is sleeved with four of all of the SPs that are relevant. That's the, that's the runner. This is the Rebecca. This is the finisher on the wind. See, I really do enjoy these because they do have different art from like this. It's different backgrounds, which is more than enough, I think. Actually, with these, it looks completely different. Uh, and the rest of the deck is just kind of foils. There's there's like four of these, but I don't want to spend too much time just, you know. And then the Claw Kicker, which I think is in this set, so... So yeah, Dog Days Max Rarity got that deck as well. It's a little painful to play. It's a little painful to play. Because I feel like Dog Days, even when it was... Uh, even when it was new, I don't think it was good. So, you know, years have not been kind to it. It's not really a whole lot in this binder, I don't think. Other than, you know, the couple SPs and the fact it's part of the Dog Days collection, which I do love. We got the three others of the Leos. The one that's in the deck. Of course, these are in the deck. I actually have extras of some of these. Only one of the Milhi Brainstorm. I need three more of this. Like I said, the reason it's not all done is... Uh, th these cards are hard to find. Milhi's a waifu for some reason. And it's just impossible to track down her cards even years later. Well, especially years later, right? Probably would have been easier to find this back when it released. But no, it just doesn't come up anymore. It doesn't show up on Mercari. It doesn't show up anywhere. So, yeah. Those are the seven cards I actually need to finish the collection. We've got this page. we got this. Not a whole lot going on here. I mean, this is just basically an EB foil place up. Nothing too special there. Now then, do I do some decks? I think I do some decks just because uh, the last two binders are pretty special. So I have Max Rarity Puyo Puyo. Picked this up for pretty good price back in the day. The SPs in question though are these. Uh, actual foils, I mean, you could probably buy foils on Yuyute for next to nothing. I don't know. I don't know if Puyo foils are stonks. But yeah, four of uh, this girl, she's the on cancel burn. I know this is going to sound bad. I literally don't know anything about Puyo Puyo. This is Aru. Aru, I think. I, I kind of picked up the deck because it was extremely cheap more than anything. Like, I'm pretty sure I picked it up for less than just these four costs. And it's funny. It's funny. It's double level one combo because your level one combos on both uh, the finisher and this thing. This is like on cancel salvage or on level up? On level up salvage with the two soul. And uh, yeah, it's hard to get those signatures. I guess I didn't realize before I recorded how hard it is to get signatures on the camera. And we've got four of this girl. This one's like on attack, top check, add. Not too bad looking. I do enjoy playing the deck. It's just more of the... It's another one of those like old decks. It feels kind of like Dog Days, where the deck just wasn't good when it came out, so it's even more painful today. Um, another random pickup I got, because it was like somewhat cheap, it was more of I was just spending a lot of money at the time, is Max Rarity Psycho Pass. Now, <laughs> Psycho Pass, of course, is one of the best shows in Weiss, I think. Definitely one of the better ones. 
Now, some of these SPs do have damage. Uh, thankfully, we're not going to pull them out of the sleeves and look at it, so hopefully it won't be too noticeable. I think one of the SPs also has some fading. It's probably why I got such a good deal on it. But yeah, and the actual key pieces of this deck are the... The only two SPs in the set, actually, but it almost came with a playset of them, so... Triple of the... I think her name is like Akane, right? Triple of her. These are vintage SPs. Definitely old. Oldest time. I think one of these is the one with damage. I, I, the camera will probably not pick this up, but there's like a like an actual indent on the card right there. Like somebody like pressed a pin on it. And then uh, this guy, you know, something. There's a little bit of fading there. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. This card's definitely lighter than this card. Absolutely one of the better shows. One of the better shows in life. Also, like, <laughs> actually, that one might be less painful than Puyo Puyo just because. You don't expect anything out of Psycho Pass, like you just read the cards, you know they don't do anything. Um, not really much to talk about here, just a couple Subarus that I have. I have three of this thing because I played, uh, I really enjoyed the Yellow Memory Snow deck, so I went and bought the foils for it. It cost next to nothing at the time. I know these Subarus have gone up, so that's the only reason I'm even including these. I think I bought these for like $12 a piece, 12 to 20, I think was in the ballpark, like 20 for the highest, 12 for the cheapest versus like what people pay like $100 for a super recipe now. So that's like kind of insane. Uh, yeah, not really a whole lot to talk about that one. Yellow Memory Snow, sadly. I was, uh, I was going to play it in teams, was my plan for 2020, but then, you know, things happened. Oh, that one's a little too expensive, that was a little too expensive. The last deck that's not really in a binder is I picked up this recently, and this is Max Rarity Milky Holmes. With, of course, four of the Herx SP. I definitely love this. Milky Holmes is another show that got me into Weiss originally. Actually, the first thing, the first line of products that we bought when I was in, uh, just graduated high school, so we were in the first year of college. Actually, it was before college, 2012. We were shopping online. Just like, okay, well, there's this game. I saw it has the sky. Let's get some stuff. A friend got a Fade Zero deck in English. I got the Disgaea Trial deck. And another friend said, you know what? I want the Milky Holmes, I think it was Milky Holmes 2 deck. So that was definitely super cool being able to actually get this deck with high rarity, like, you know, 10 years later. This was, a, this was a more recent purchase. Right, we've got more Herx, more Cheryls, some Gardens. I'm really doing a deck profile today. Over a set that aged extremely poorly. I felt like Milky Homes was pretty rough even when P5 was out and you're getting like calling carded, but. Man, it got rougher. It got rougher as time went on. So yeah, I'm not sure what uh, this binder is. I don't remember off the top of my head. Got two binders with a lot of stuff in it. So this is the Ruby binder. I do have a Max Rarity playset of Ruby with every card that is not in here is in the deck. Because I've got the, uh, the deck. We'll go over the deck later. Or I guess as it comes up. So we have the runner from the TD. I love this card. Uh, I've actually played it once and I think it's terrible. But I love the are you robbing me quote on it. If we get that. It's so hard to get the gold. Yeah, it's love the quote on that one. 
We've got the Weiss Reef Standard. This card is probably one of the better cards that Ruby has. I love it as an off finisher. Definitely gets the job done. Definitely plays into the actual game plan. Uh, this would be for the Secret Rare, because there's only one of it in the set. It's the <laughs> Ugliest Sin. Pira, I cannot believe they used these terrible models from this game for the set. However, I did not choose what I had to buy. Because I said I would max this when it came out. Uh, we have the Ruby. Yeah, a lot of these cards are in decks. Or the deck plays a lot of SPs, more of. Got the Ruby Rose level 3. I love the rainbow on the actual signature. Actually, really like this SP. Wow. Then, of course, the next card would be the level 3 Blake, because I have these sorted by level. Actually, the, the Blake would probably be here, because it's probably RBYW. Wait. RWBY, there we go. Wow. The next slot would be for the Weiss combo. I do like the way the SPs look. The normal cards... Normal cards don't look bad, but man, SPs? SPs look sick. The Yang. Yang is one of the better Ruby characters, of course. Yang Gang. I like the monks. I like the people who punch. On this side. The Ruby Vital Festival. Definitely one of the MVPs alongside the Restander. Just grabs anything on play. Love this card. And this is one of the better looking models that they put on one of these ruby rares. I know a lot of the ruby rares are pretty rough. This is the Weiss level. Three, I think this card's unplayable. I've never really sleeved it. Even in a deck like 8 standby. Um, putting down this level 3 assist that kind of does nothing isn't, isn't exactly ideal. We have over here. This Blake. This card is also pretty rough. Both art-wise, I think the face is a little, little messed up. And then the actual effect is just a really, just a mocha. I mean, it can do everything a mocha can do, which is not much. Uh, the Yang top end, this card is unfortunately terrible because of the nature of the set, but you know, it's Yang. Thankfully, they made most of the Ruby Rares unplayable, so don't have to look at them too much. Just cards from the TD. Got Cinders, the Pira, Free Fresh Counter, Dog. Love the dog. Love the dog. Neptune, one of my favorite characters. Definitely an absolute meme. The Ironwood, of course. These things that went up, thanks to you know the choice list. I don't, I don't actually appreciate the choice standby list, but I do like seeing that my cards have gone up in value. Lee Ren, I do keep the normal ones uh, sleeved most of the time because I think the other ones only should come out at you know in extreme circumstances, right? Like tournaments, like big tournament, definitely want to be repping that. And uh. I need two more, but I have a fourth one. I have a fourth one. Don't worry about that. It's just in a different binder. Probably need to move it over here. These are the congratulations, PRs, that I paid far out the ass for. This is the single most expensive card I have ever purchased. Not that I own, actually, but that I've ever purchased. With only 15 of them in the world, I own four. So definitely cool to own. I, I had to I had to go hard on Ruby, and thankfully uh, the main reason I did it is my good friend Nico. 
May he rest in peace, as he probably will. Uh, he might be in the Toronto Regional. I think he might be going down there. He uh, he hooked me up with his, and then Kisa, who was fortunate enough to get second in, I believe it was AO, hooked me up with two more. And so, I, don't know, I already found three, and you can't just have three of a card. You have to own four. So, of course, I own a fourth, but it's in an even more impressive binder, so we're going to wait for that. We're going to save that for the end. And then I think that's it for this binder. Not really a whole lot more going on there. That one's pretty impressive. However, that's not my favorite binder. This is my favorite binder. This is uh, the legendary... Max Rarity Disgaea Collection. In English, of course. And the reason I even own this is thanks to some seller, I think in 2017, was willing to sell a like lot of like a 13 signs for like $500. Five or 600. So I picked it up. Because I love sky. It's actually the thing that got me into the game. I don't think I'd be playing this without it. It was what made me initially buy product. And it's what initially brought me back into the game. Because I, I kind of like bought product, didn't play. And then they said sky in English. And that's when I actually started to take the game seriously. 2015, 2016 time. And uh, during one of the tournaments that we went to. I was talking with a friend and teammate. And he's like, you should just you should just max it. Just max playset to get four of everything. We've got the flan. Love the flan. This card, actually, most of these cards are like turbo ass. But my favorite franchise. So uh, I, not anymore, but definitely, definitely still love this guy. It's definitely up there. We got the Etna. Card is okay. It's a healer, right? It was played. And then the English exclusive SP, Laharl himself. This was originally like a 1 1 level assist on the SP in Japanese. But in English, we get it on the uh, previously banned card that goes to memory. Actually insane. One of the best cards in the set. Actually, the best card in the set. It's like the only relevant one. It's the only card that still makes you go, wow, when you see it. Desco herself. This was like the bootleg Laharl replacement. Absolutely terrible. Uh, the Fuka. Really funny early play that swings in at like a million power and four soul. It's like the OG Shiragana. Yeah, plus, oh, it's only 3k. Wow. This thing's only 13k power. I guess this thing sucks. Early plays, five or less cards in deck. The, this is hard foil to see. This is the OGTD foil. It's very hard to see because it's just black background with nothing really, except for you can see the letters sometimes when it hits the light. Or these, these things were kind of hard to find. These things were kind of hard to find. However, this might be the rarest card in the game. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. I know somebody magically found one in like no time at all recently. I found one of these from Australia. One of these, I think that one cost me like 40 to 50. And this was in 2018. Yeah, this was like 2018 before the prices actually increased. 2018, 2019 time. So, one from Australia. One from, I think it was like Atlanta. It was in like the Alabama, Georgia region is where they were from. One from the June. That one cost me $100. Like, I was, I was so desperate. These cards just don't exist. And I found one in a miscategorized uh, box. And because this... See, this card is absolutely cursed. One, it's from 2008. Oldison. Two, it's the worst of the two foils. Like, the, the one foil was always $40. This thing was sitting at, like, $3. Number three. The set code for this card doesn't specify that it's a foil. So, people miscategorize it, they throw it away, not a lot of them were printed, this is like the hardest card to hunt down, but I managed to get my hands on four of it, it took a long time. 
Etna from the TD. Flan from the TD. This one was also hard. This one, uh, I think these are about the same on playability. Like, they're both, like, okay-ish. But the Flan was extremely hard to track down. Just the Hall of Harl. I love this one. The uh, Ras Rasbarrel and Flan with the glasses. Definitely a super good, uh, super good art. Uh, the funny card that has the, there's a lot of printing errors in this set, where if it focuses, where the continue, like the cont, continuous effect box is like in the middle of the actual effect. Uh, Fallen Angel Flan, definitely a great one. Laharl and Mao, another good one. Rasbarrel is always cute. Some of these, the rest of them, I think, just kind of like whatever here for a bit. Greatest climax ever printed. Uh, helped us get second in Texas. The Etna and the Two Soul. And then a uh, project I've kind of started is I realized that these radio PRs specifically for Disgaea 4, I think you had to like buy a CD that had like a recording of a radio broadcast on it to get these. Um, each of these is like $50. It, it's like, they're, they're pretty expensive. And uh, after finishing the English play set, I realized, yeah, maybe I should get those just because they're, they're rare enough to like want to have. Uh, missing two of this card, I think it's like a thousand power or something on turn. I'm missing one of the two, so can't uh, manage to find those, but maybe when I'm in Japan this time, this year, I'll be able to hunt those down. Uh, next one, most of the cards are in the binder, if not, they're in this deck. The deck only plays like two or three foils, so nothing too special. Is Kimono Friends, I mean, a lot of people you ever talk to me, you ever know. This is my favorite thing, if you look at uh, Heart of the Cards, it's like all I've ever played at those WGP events. Though I don't go to those anymore, so... Well, I guess they don't have them anymore, right? They cancel WGP? And I have a max play set of this, too. Four of everything, you know. Thankfully, it wasn't too expensive. This was, like, my first case. My first case in the game, of course. When I was... Was this 2016 when this one came out? Had a lot of hits in a case. It's oh, it's hard to get that. There we go. It's, like, it's really sad that it's so hard to get those signatures on this camera. You know, I absolutely love... I absolutely love some of these. Like this one. This is one of my favorite signs in the game. It's got like a little crying caban and it says, uh, please don't eat me. There we go. On to the next side, of course. Lucky Beast, who's like a staple in a lot of the decks. I'm kind of glad we never got a second set for this. The show was so bad. We have the Monkey Girl. The Fennec. This card was like pretty good for a while. I mean, I, I wouldn't say pretty good. It was never like the best build. It's just like, the raccoon was funny because it would run over stuff. Probably be okay in today's meta. Just because uh, there's so much, well not today's meta, in today's English meta, right? Like I guess the meta a while ago. Because the card is just so big, the raccoon swings in it like up to like 14k. It's like OG Don Machi pretty much. The lemur. I think that card's terrible. The otter. The board clear herself. Pumps 4,000 power on attack if you t pass a top check. And has hand on course. So you just hand on core every turn. Always get a clear with your always at full power raccoon. It's so hard to get those SPs in the, the camera. So I guess it's because my lighting sucks. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I just need uh, I need better equipment, to be honest. As far as lighting, here's the Toki. It's 
got a little, okay, let's try to get that, let's try to get that. It's got the little B Toki flying around on the card. I know she's a favorite for a lot of people. She's definitely up there for me. Shoe Bill. I actually played this card for a while. It's pretty fun. It's like a massive card that can't move, but top checks three rearranges. This set was really fun to brew with, especially back in the day, because the power levels were a lot lower, so you could do a lot funnier stuff, I felt, and like still have a functioning deck. Of course, we have the Triple P. We've got the absolute fat-ass Emperor Penguin. Look at that. She's so thick. Then we have Rock Hopper. Once again, it's so hard to get those signatures. Oh god, which one is this? This one's Hulu, right? Oh no, I actually get um, these two penguins. I get this one and the level zero brain are mixed up. I don't actually remember which one's which. Though we do have the royal penguin, princess. She's pretty good. Definitely should move the binder a little bit. There we go. Dolphin. One of the craziest cards when this came out. Absolutely insane. Bounces back every single turn for free, basically. You just always have hand. Of course, though, your hand is only the dolphin. That's the only downside. Never reprinted. They knew it was too strong. It also swings in really big. It's like 7.5 AK on like the last one. Yeah, AK, if you have like the alpaca out. I don't remember this one. Don't remember which one's which. Uh, Kaban from the TD. This one was surprisingly hard to get. Japan really likes the vanilla healer. So this one was... It's like always the TD cards. Always the TD cards that are hard. The Raccoon. Serval. These are just, like, these are just the SRs. There's not a lot of foils in the set. And then this was the serve vault that goes to memory from the link set to the level zero. And then, of course, this is the gold cards. They had these little packs that would come up in shops where you could pull these promos. But, of course, Tsuchinoko is the best, so she gets a full page. And you get that little gold stamp on it instead of the normal version. And then uh, this is the last actual big set I own is Vivid Strike. But of course, there's still another binder. Don't worry about that. Told you this collection is pretty big. Absolutely love this show. Decided to max it recently. And I've been, you know, I, I had the Rene stuff. I had uh, most of the Rene stuff minus this TD card already. But then I managed to find a pretty good deal on a deck that had everything else. And I said, you know, I already own like half of this. I just got the deck. The deck had most of the other foils. So let's try to play set it. So let's get out the deck. It's triple sleeved, of course. So this is the one card I don't own four of. This is the TDSP. I have like three of it. It's the Fuka from the TD. No, I actually have two of it. It's very hard to track down these old TDSPs, though. And they, oh, they're they really expensive. And there's no buyers, though, like when you do find them. So I think I managed to find one of these for like 70. On Yuyute, they're sitting at like over 100. Like at 15, 15K yen. So yeah, that's this. I have two. 
Then next card would be green, so that would be the Ironheart level one. I have four of this. I have four of pretty much everything else. It's just that one card I don't have four of. Of course, we have the Fuka level three. Not exactly a staple in the deck, so. I mean, it is a staple in the deck, but you don't play four of it, so it's not like a don't need four of it. And all of these SPs are super cheap, thankfully. The show was forgotten about. Very good action. I get, Yeah, the action was good. The action was good. The music was good. I liked how edgy it was. I felt like it did the edge in a way that was fun. Just a little over the top. Vivio. I played this. This was like the main finisher I played for the longest time, but... Age got the better of it. I just have to go back to Fuka. And Fuka surprisingly got better because people play less removal than they used to. Like people used to play Adachis. Adachis aren't played anymore. Um, these are foils that are in the deck. It's like the uh, the Saver. It's like the Brainstorm, the, the Ricky, the Saver. Deck does play a lot of foils, so. Some of this binder might look a little barren. Yeah, like the gold bars are both being played. I don't know, there's supposedly a PR that goes here. I don't know what it is. Like this is PR3, this is PR1. What uh, What's going on there? I don't actually know. I think if I remember right, if you look at Yujute, they don't even have the other PR. Uh, Ace Roll is the best Pokemon girl. Let's go. We've got Vivid Strike. Uh, I, I have extras of these, yeah. If anyone wants them, please buy them. I really don't want to have seven extra SPs. I have four extra clean cuts and three extra healers. I owned uh, four and four. I bought a deck. It came with four and three. So... Yeah, and that's the end of that one. Uh, this is a little pool, I guess. People might. This is a hand sign from the voice actress, the English voice actress for Artina. That's it for that binder. Um, let's see. Before I get into the big binder, I guess I also own this. One of the most cursed purchases of all time, as I do own Max Rarity Mob Psycho, just the deck. However, the deck runs 19 SPs, so I effectively have almost a playset of Mob Psycho. Now, the big problem with Mob Psycho is that the shitty TD SP went from $90 to $300. And so I am never willing to finish the playset because the deck is turbo cheeks. I'm not gonna lie, it's it's pretty rough. I think it was good when it came out, uh, when the standby meta wasn't fully developed, and then we got Dao. Like, right, like standby was being played by some decks, but it wasn't like you're not gonna see standby every round. Then Dao came out, like not even a couple months later, and suddenly. You know, what are you going to do with your bounce back combo? Like, when it came out and into non standby decks, I think this deck is actually pretty good. Actually, this deck's probably fine in Japanese right now. People aren't really playing a whole lot. And I think your finisher is almost up to par with like current Japanese finishers. It's four stock to triple. Uh, every two additional stock, you get a wig. You just need a lot of hand. Your combo gets you a lot of hand. The Dimple SP. I don't think any of this was like super hard to get um, until it was. Thankfully, I already had it by then. I mean, if you follow the channel, you knew I had Mob Psycho maxed, so that's not like too special. It is very expensive, though. It's very expensive. Um, I guess before we get into the binder, I also have picked up these over the time. Well, actually just very recently. So, these are, I think it was like a Korean exclusive and they only made 50 of them. And each one 
is a hard metal Shioko. This might make some collectors cringe. This is a hard metal card, very thick. Shioko. There's only 50 of these. And they made three different cards, so that means 150 total. And I love Shioko. I like collecting a lot of the random promos that they have in this game. So, and there's the healer. The other one was the finisher. And then here is the Riki. So, definitely do love these. Then I was managed to pick those up. And uh, wow, we're actually almost at the end of this. It's a pretty long video, though. I know that much. I see the camera battery dying. I've had this book for like 11 years, and this is where I keep most of the miscellaneous stuff, like anything that's not like an actual collection collection, and uh, it, most of the random SPs I pull. And wrong side, okay, it helps, it helps to open it from the front, I guess. So first off, we have a card that a lot of people probably would like to have. I remember being very sad when I pulled this, actually. I wanted Nautico or Hachikuji at the time. And I pulled this. This was my first SP I ever pulled out of a box. Back when Bakke Monogatari released. And uh, yeah, ne never selling. Diamond hands, never grading. You know, I hate, I think that grading is an absolute scam. I think it's, uh, I think it's unnecessary. This card has been triple sleeved, double sleeved since it's, uh, since I pulled it, so of course it's looking pretty good. Bought this one from a vendor. Karen is the best girl in Monogatari, I think. You know, she's definitely the best. Love Marshmallow Justice, love the character. Uh, she punches stuff kind of like Yang, but she's from a much better show, so it helps. Got the SP of the Field Swap. And these cards are impossible to get nowadays. Like everything went up so high. I remember this thing was like $70. And I, I didn't even want to spend 70 on this thing back at the time, but uh, cause I was, I was a lot cheaper back then, but. Yeah, like what is this thing now? Like two, 300? I'm not even gonna talk about the Senjo. Uh, random cards. My first box that I ever pulled was this Madoka. Got this from the TD way back in the day. SSP Simone, I was fortunate enough to get. Not a Nia, not a Yoko, it's a Simone. He was kind of worthless for a while, but he's definitely gone up a lot recently. With all the Gurren collectors. Uh, Rin, not too impressive because there's like one SP per Vocaloid box, right? Versus like most sets, you get a bunch, but yeah. I liked Rin, she was my favorite, so. An Abyssal SP, I think they have some of the best art. I love the big characters on it. I think this is how you do stamps. Like these, this like ink blot and then like the big letters. A Bismarck. Oh, it says I have four minutes left. So I should probably hurry a little bit. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And this is, we only got four minutes left. Uh, I got a number. I got a number from Madoka. This is eight, it's really hard to see. Uh, Monogatari, SSP Nino, it's okay, we'll make it, SSP Giorno, oh, maybe not, this, this binder is thick, uh, the last Lee Ren, who cares, and, yeah, this, this page is pretty impressive, we got four copies of the Yukina Regional Spring Fest promo, if you got a lot of money, PM me, <laughs> I would probably get rid of two of these, I earned two, so I'll never sell them. World's promos, uh, there's only like nine of these in existence. Uh, I sold one for a lot, we'll, we won't talk about it. This thing, Goblin Slayer World's promo, wasn't lucky enough to get the Sakura, congratulations Karumi, I like to keep at least one copy of most of the stamps. So we have those. I'm slow rolling this, I guess, until now. Gibral, you know, these are probably the things that people actually want to see. These are probably more impressive than Disky and Dog Days, but random Vocaloids, uh, 
million live. I have the SSP for, this is Japanese stuff. I know not as many people care about that. Chisato, who was my MVP back in the day. Of course, I had to pick up for her SP. Mismatch, because I didn't really care. I just wanted to be SP. Uh, absolute MVP and Bang Dream. One of the best cards. I mean, if people played the, uh, the Neptune and Ruby, or I guess the Gil Thunder in Seven Deadly Sins, I think they know. They know. Uh, another random Bang Dream SSP. I was lucky enough to pull this. I haven't found a buyer that's really willing to pay what I want. And uh, yeah, that's it. The last thing that's kind of cool is this Climax real quick before the camera dies. This was the only merchandise from Madoka I had when Calafina visited Asen in 2013. So this, this card is signed by the entire cast of Calafina. Like this is like all five members. So yeah, I had them do the uh, the Mammy Climax because they do the, all the music. And yeah, that's uh, uh, that's the extent of what I own for Weiss. I, I, there's actually definitely more. There's de like random SPs and decks, but I wasn't willing to get them out, but that's the big stuff. And it seems the camera's gonna die, so this is Dean signing out.